Daf Yomi, Tractate Bava Kama, page 90b, part 2, with the words um, Ad Khan Lo Kama Rav Tarfon, Rebbe Tarfon, Ella de Miktsasa Nasu Eidim, etc. Etc. Okay. Um, the Gemara infers from this Brisa that even Rabbi Tarfin says his opinion only in a case where some of the members of the Sanhedrin have become witnesses and some of them have become judges. But he did not say that a witness becomes a judge without anyone else testifying. All the more so, according to the opinion of Rabbi Kiva, would it not be permitted for Rabbi Yehuda Nasiya to act as a judge as well as serving as a witness? The Gemara rejects this. One could say that when that Bryce uh, is taught, it is taught in a case where the Sanhedrin saw the murder at night, at which time it is not permitted for them to practice judgment since cases of capital law may be judged only during the daytime. There were, therefore, not functioning as judges at that time. On the following day, testimony must be heard from some, now acting as witnesses in the front of others, now acting as judges. By contrast, in the case of Rabbi Yehuda Nesia, he was able to serve as both the witnesses and the judge as he witnessed the event while functioning as a judge. The Gemara offers an alternative explanation, and if you and if you wish, say instead that Rabbi Yehuda Nesia did not witness the incident, and this is what he said to the assailant: "This is I that I hold in accordance with the opinion." Rabbi Yossi Aglili, who says that 100 dinners of Tyrian coinage must be paid, and these are witnesses who, who testify concerning you that you struck the other. Therefore, go and give him 100 dinners of Tyrian coinage. The Gemara discusses the previously mentioned opinions of Rabbi Kiva, but does Rabbi Kiva hold? That a witness cannot become a judge? But isn't it taught in a Brayta to Sefta Sanhedrin 12.3 with regard to what is stated in the Torah concerning judge injuries? And if men contend, and one smite the other with a stone or with his fist, Be'even o Be'egrof. Exodus 21.18 Rabbi Shim, that Shimon HaTimni says, Shimon HaTimni. Shimon HaTimni says, just as a fist is unique, in that it is submitted to the assembly of judges to assess its ability to injure and to the witnesses who attest that it was the, it was the fist used to strike as a mean as as a first remains attached to the assailant, so too a ruling can be issued in the case of any item that is submitted to the assembly of judges to assess its ability to ensure and to the witnesses to injure and to the witnesses who attest that this was an item used to strike. This serves to exclude a case where the stone, the injured, left the possession of the witnesses and is not available to be inspected by the court to assess if it is capable of causing the purported injury. Rabbi Akiva said to him, but, it is, but is it the case that in all incidents of injury, the assailant struck him in the presence of the court so that they know exactly how hard he struck him and on what part of the body he struck him 
For example, if he struck him on his thigh, or if he struck, or or if he struck him on the lobe of his heart. Rather, the court relies on witnesses to testify about the injury. Therefore, the witnesses should be able to testify about the item used as well. And furthermore, if there was one who pushed another from the top of the roof or from the top of a building and the one who was pushed died as a result of the fall, do the members of the court go to the building to inspect how high it is or does the building go to the court? Obviously neither. The court relies upon the testimony of witnesses who state how tall the building is. And furthermore, if the building collapsed, must the court, must the court rebuild it in order to assess its height? The witness should then be able to testify about the item used as well. Rabbi Akiva attempts to... to, to att- Rabbi Akiva interprets the verse differently, just as a fist is unique in that it is submitted to the witnesses for them to testify about it, so too a ruling can be issued in the case of any item that is submitted to the witness, witnesses to testify, it, despite the items not being available for the court to assess. This serves to exclude a case Okay. This serves to exclude a case where the stone that injured left the possession of the assailant and cannot be found. And even the witnesses weren't able to see it in such a case. The assailant is exempt from payment since the witnesses, even the witnesses cannot testify about whether the stone was capable of inflicting the purported injuries. The Gemara states its question. In any event, it teaches. There are Akiva said through Shimon Timni, all are cases of injury such that the assailant struck him in the presence of the court so that they know exactly how hard he struck him, it can be inferred from this, that if he did, in fact, strike him in front of them, Rabbi Akiva would agree that a witness can become a judge. This contradicts the opinion of Rabbi Akiva in the Brita that a witness cannot become a judge. The Gemara answer is that there is no proof as to the, as the opinion of Rikiva, since it may be that he stated his reputation in accordance with the, the statement of Shimon HaTimni, but he himself does not hold accordingly. Perhaps Rabbi Akiva himself holds that if the court had witnessed the act, they would not be able to render judgment concerning it. The Gemara quotes are related to Halakha. The, the sages said, the sages taught, Tanarabanan short Tom Shamus The sages taught in the case of innocuous ox that killed a person and subsequently went and caused damage, the court judges it as a case of capital law, and the ox is killed and the court does not judge it as a case of monetary law, despite the damage that it caused. By contrast, if the case of a foreign ox that killed a person and subsequently went and caused damage, the court judges it as a case of monetary law, and the owner is liable to pay for half the damage it caused. And then, when the court goes back and judges it again, as a capital law, the ox is killed. But if the court proceeded and judged it first as a case of capital law, the court does not go back and judge it, According, again, um, as a case of monetary law, since it has already been sentenced to be killed. The Gemara asks, And if they proceeded and judged it, first as a case of capital law, what of it? Let, let them go back and judge it again according to the case of monetary law. Rabbi said, I found the sages of the school of wrong who were sitting and saying, to explain this, in accordance with whose opinion is this? Is it in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Shimon Timni, who says that just as a fist is unique that is submitted to the assembly, the judges who assess his ability to injure and to the witnesses to attest that this was 
the fist used to strike. So two, a ruling can be issued in the case of any lien that is submitted to the assembly of judges to assess its ability to injure and to the witnesses to attest that this was the item used to strike. 